Hello, my name is George Demiris. I'm with the University of Pennsylvania. And today, along with my colleagues, Drs. Chang and Turner, we're going to be presenting um, ways that informatics can be used to engage vulnerable populations in research. And specifically, we're looking at lessons learned from three projects um, that were deployed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, with the pandemic, we have experienced uh, many challenges globally in terms of uh, lockdowns and social distancing rules that have it made difficult for participants uh, not only to access biomedical and healthcare services, but also to engage in biomedical research. Um, in order to address these challenges, information technology systems and tools were quickly developed to bridge geographic distance and allow people to remotely continue their participation in research activities. We even saw the emergence of clinical trials that uh, transferred to a virtual platform, so became virtual clinical trials, uh, namely allowing the use of digital tools so that participants can continue to engage in these research activities. However, the ability of an individual to continue to engage in research activities during these times really depended on the available infrastructure and that put vulnerable populations at greater risk for exclusion. Vulnerable populations are these populations that have limited access to resources and or are at greater risk for bias and discrimination. And they were uh, in many cases excluded from research participation during these times. So as we think about designing informatics tools, we do need to recognize the importance of digital equity namely whether individuals and communities can readily use technological infrastructure to meaningfully participate in activities of modern society. The goal of our presentation is to discuss case studies of ongoing research projects that specifically targeted vulnerable populations and showcase some of the challenges as well as strategies developed to overcome these strategies that were introduced by the pandemic in order to maintain engagement of these populations in research activities. The first project I'm presenting is the Pisces project, which is actually a problem solving therapy intervention that has been, uh, been designed to be delivered to family caregivers of patients at the end of life. So we are recruiting caregivers who are informal or unpaid caregivers family members or trusted others of patients at the end of life who are in hospice with a prognosis of six months to live or less. Caregivers in that situation face a lot of uh, stressful barriers and uh, oftentimes feel isolated and have a difficulty um, coping with a challenging situation. So this is a behavioral intervention, a cognitive behavioral intervention uh, that's designed to help caregivers problem solve and cope during stressful times. The original clinical trial was testing the value of this intervention when delivered face to face. Of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we quickly realized that we had to convert all in-person sessions to virtual ones. And by doing so, we had to have flexibility in terms of selecting hardware and software platforms we realized that some of our participants had extensive experience with specific video conferencing solutions like Zoom or Skype. Others had never used video conferencing uh, uh, software before. And similarly, uh, people had different levels of uh, access in their homes. Some had uh, broadband internet, some did not even have internet access. So we had to find ways to provide um, the same level of access for all which meant we had to increase our technical support and develop educational strategies that would be effective when people are to be guided through technical issues over the phone or remotely. Uh, we redesigned all the intervention sessions and the training protocol, as well as the treatment fidelity checklists we were using to recognize that now all our sessions were virtual and to allow for the time necessary for participants to adapt and adjust to these new technological tools. Uh, in order to convert all our sessions into virtual ones, we needed to make sure that they still remain effective. So we introduced new monitoring to assess 
technical quality of the video sessions as well as any um, unanticipated uh, challenges with the video. Um, and when we uh, conducted home sessions, the limited ones, we did address issues of accessibility and preparedness and made them a standard part of our environmental scan protocol. I'm Chang from Physios Group Nursing, and I'm going to talk briefly about the Voice to Connect project. In this user-centered design study, we aim to develop low fidelity prototypes of smart speakers that can improve social connectedness in older adults who are living alone in low-income senior housing. The issue of social isolation and loneliness is very common in low-income senior housing residents. And during the pandemic, it has become a more critical issue in this population. Next, please. All in-person activities at the facilities were canceled by the property management and visitors were not allowed to enter the building. Because of this change, we had to convert the mode of study activities from in-person visits to phone-based meetings. Also, we had to change the focus group session location from the senior housing buildings to the university campus. Most of the senior housing residents don't have access to the internet or um, computer and smartphones, so we were not able to use a conferencing technology like Zoom to talk to our potential participants. My team has a strong, long-standing partnership with the community, including property managers of these buildings and their residents. This turned out to be a key strategy for the successful conduct of this study. Based on this partnership, we discussed technology sustainability plans prior to and throughout the project. We made sure that this study is understood by senior housing residents as a baseline needs assessment, and the focus group meetings are used as a vehicle for gathering their input and feedback for future technology development and implementation. Also, housing staff members were vital in subject recruitment, such as identifying potential participants and facilitating information sessions. A few residents um, volunteered to become an ambassador to share study information with other residents for subject recruitment. Working together with the community has been the most effective strategy that helps the team to address challenges introduced by the COVID pandemic. Hi, my name is Ann Turner. I'm a professor at the University of Washington and um, a principal investigator of the decision-making and Alzheimer's research project. This project is a five-year research project to better understand decision-making processes around transitions of, reading, of receiving more supportive care for individuals with dementia. We are developing a novel tool to identify and track preferences of people with dementia for more supportive care, even as their disease progresses, and then investigate those changes in preferences over time. Next slide. The project um, began um, just shortly after the COVID restrictions had been put into place at the University of Washington. Our um, first year was really concentrated on interviews um, and recruiting people with dementia, caregivers and providers had to be um, changed in order to convert to remote re recruitment and interviews. Several of the things that we did to facilitate this was altered our screening tests, we supplemented consent materials, and we partnered heavily with the University of Washington ADRC to purposely sample a diverse set of the individuals with dementia based on severity, race, and ethnicity. Our study design changed. Um, we we um, began with uh, staff and providers instead of individuals with dementia um, to allow people um, to get more familiar with technology. And um, in terms of privacy and technology, we were, although we had um, hoped to interview people separately, caregivers and people with dementia, we, um, to, to assist with the technology, we had caregivers um, stay um, in close proximity when we did the interviews. But through um, these changes, we were able to successfully interview about 80 individuals both um, either on Zoom or by phone. And um, 
uh, through, uh, again, using these strategies. Thank you. These three case studies demonstrate the importance of digital equity, not only for healthcare delivery, but also participation in biomedical research. Considerations in order to meaningfully engage vulnerable populations include infrastructure that is necessary, addressing the issue of the financial means that may be required to utilize such resources, and also recognize that participants may have varying abilities when it comes to functional, cognitive, or emotional performance uh, that may be actual barriers to adapting just-in-time conversions of traditional services to digital ones. We need to raise awareness about digital inequities and the impact that these have on vulnerable communities. And informatics systems designers really need to prioritize digital inclusion. Thank you again for listening to this presentation. Feel free to contact any of us for any further information or questions. Thank you again.